In this episode of the Leader Smith Podcast, I want to talk about three principles that will serve you really, really, really well during difficult times. Stay tuned. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leader Smith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Okay, so in this episode, I'm going to talk about three principles that will serve you well during hard times. So it's really more of a story than anything else. And I'll give you some of the background. Um, I just blogged about it the other day. Uh, I, I used to blog religiously, I, like weekly. I would put out blog posts. Um, if for no other reason, then I would put out blog posts for a, um, a business networking group. And so that kept me you know, doing that weekly and I'd try to do more than that. And uh, in May, I started uh, the Leader Smith podcast. And when I did start the podcast, I meant to blog and podcast. And that fell through, but I'm on episode 96 now of the podcast from May to mid-October, so that's not too bad. So um, at any rate, so I, I blogged about this the other day, and I thought, you know, this this really needs to be a episode um, for the uh, for the podcast as well. So what happened was um, the other day, this was, so I, I live in a neighborhood with a homeowners association, and the other day uh, I got this uh, hate mail from the homeowners association that said, uh, hey, you didn't take in your trash bin, next time you're going to get a fine. And so a week or two went by, and then um, I got another one where they took a picture of it with the, you know, the date time stamp, and uh, so what happened was my trash can was out the, the day after it was collected, and that's apparently a big offense uh, to the homeowners association. Like, who time to drive around in the golf cart to you know uh, do this this is why people hate homeowners associations at any rate so I take the um, the hate mail to my son who is his his whole his primary chore is to get the trash out of the house into the bin to the curb and then bring the the trash bin back so I take it to him and I say well okay um, see this I had him read it to me and I said okay tell me how you're gonna pay for it and his eyes got wide like saucers because like you know he's 12 I and mean, he's gonna see maybe 50 bucks that are that's his own to spend for whatever he wants between his birthday Christmas and you know when grandma comes to town I mean he's gonna see not more than so he didn't have the money so he's thinking like what do I do and so I said okay well you're gonna figure it out um, and so when I did that I kind of felt bad but I thought you know this is a good life lesson. He has to understand that, you know, he can't do this again, not only for my, <clears throat> my fine, but for himself to take responsibility. So I, I felt bad about that. And then I felt real bad later. Um, I, you know, later he put in an, in an envelope, he put all the money that he had, which was about half of that in an envelope on my desk. And he asked me if I had gotten it later and, and he had put it in it that I, I felt like a heel, but at the same time, it's a good life lesson for him to, to get. So I, you know, I didn't think anything of it, but a week later I was surprised when he gave me the balance of it and here, here's the remaining money. And I was like, wait, where'd you get that? Like, I know he doesn't have a job, so I'm a little skeptical about it. So where'd you get that? And he said, well, I've been doing these odd jobs here and there, and I've been, you know, working for this neighbor and that neighbor. I was like, no, just go put the money back from wherever you took it. Cause I, you know, I'm thinking he like swiped it from a sibling and, um, and he was upset with me cause he, I didn't believe him. So I'm thinking like, that's not the lesson that I want him to take away from this. I want him to, to man up, take responsibility, not to go swipe it from a sibling. Um, so I didn't believe him, but the next day I'm looking for him. I can't find him. I'm going, okay, where is he? He's, he's riding his bike back home and I'm kind of angry at this point. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, you didn't tell me that you were going out. What, what's the story? Um, uh, and behind him is a neighbor and he's, the neighbor's walking his dog and, um, and the neighbor comes and he, he comes over to me and he profusely thanks me for lending my son so that he could pick up the sticks in his yard or whatever. He goes on about how, look, you know, I have two bad knees. I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm so glad that he came to my door and asked if he could do any odd jobs. Uh, I really needed this. And uh, I thought, oh, wait, maybe <laughs> maybe he was telling the truth when he was talking about the odd jobs. And he, apparently he was. So here's what happened. So uh, the first is responsibility. So my son, 
when I gave him that, you know, he, here's the, the fine, here's what happened, you did this, you got to make it right, he took responsibility. I couldn't be more proud of him because he manned up and took responsibility. And then he tried to figure out how to do it. And he didn't really have a lot of opportunity to do things like you know he was asking me sometime last week about like well when you were my age what did you do to make money and i i totally didn't connect um you know the the fine to uh his question i wasn't thinking about it at the time it was just passing conversation i told him i shoveled snow that doesn't really help a lot in south carolina and so but he apparently the wheels were turning so he it turns out he went to all the neighbors in like a three block radius asking can i do odd jobs and he was he was picking up sticks he was uh, sweeping driveways, he was washing cars, he was doing all these things, and he came up with the money uh, in order to pay his fine. So I am amazed that he uh, stepped up and took that responsibility. And so that's the first thing, take responsibility. I read a lot of success and leadership books, and everyone talks about take responsibility, take responsibility, take responsibility. You're never going to get it anywhere if you're dodging responsibility. There's this one guy, I think it was, I think this was online, not in the book, but he was like, look, if it rains, it's my fault. When you take hyper responsibility like that, like uh, Jocko uh, Willink talks about um, extreme ownership. When you take responsibility for everything, whether it's your fault or not, guess what? You're going to succeed. So the second point is how the market works. Look, I need you to understand, like, it's not just that he needed money. The He paired himself with people who actually needed what he could offer. Like, this guy had two bad knees. He can't get around. He needs to get this done, but he's, you know, hoping that it can get done. Along comes my son going, look, I need money. I've got two fresh knees that are only 12 years old, and I can go work and do whatever it is that, that needs to get done because, you know, I, I'm fit and able-bodied. You pair those two together, you get success. That's how the market works. So, you have to find this, this linkage between what the buyer wants and what the seller wants. And when it does, it's a beautiful thing. Of course, I'm a business professor, so I think in terms of that being beautiful. But as a business professor, I also thought of this. I also thought, wow, I missed the boat. I mean, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of my son. But at the same time, I didn't have any expectation that he was going to go do that. And I thought, you know... There's a, a fascinating parallel between here and what my son just did. He just, he amazed me, probably because he can't pick up in his own room, right? So if he could figure out how to pick up the clothes in his own room and, and do his chores properly, the, what got us here, I would have thought more of it. But I think a lot of managers, a lot of leaders have low expectations. There's this, this great line from uh, George W. Bush, the soft bigotry of low expectations. And I was thinking about that. Like, I... I didn't think that he could do what he could do. I, I didn't expect it. But what should my expectations have been for my son? I mean, I want him to grow. I want him to succeed. What should my expectations have been? Same, same with the with the economy right now during COVID. People are in hard times. People have to adjust. Businesses are going under left and right. What are your expectations for yourself or for your people during this time? Do you think that they can step up and succeed and, and they can use their brains to come up with novel solutions to be able to keep the, the organization running properly? Or do you just think, oh, well, you know, what are we going to do? The system's against us. The, you know, it's COVID. It's, it's this. It's that. If you expect things, I mean, if you, if you really expect people to do well, they generally rise up and they meet your expectations. And I think that that's so, so very critical. And uh, that I didn't do that with my son. I'm I'm sad about, but I thought, you know, let me share this with others because I think that we should start expecting more, not only of ourselves, but of our people. And I don't mean like you do more or else. I mean like, hey, you have a, a brain. You're, you're, you're as smart as I am. You're together. We're smarter than either of us are. So let's see what we can do to, to pivot, to take responsibility, to embrace this new reality and to do more, to please more customers in the market, to thrive. And if we do those things, we'll be just Fine. Okay, so that's all that I wanted to say today. Uh, but I want to close with, as I always do, with a quotation for contemplation. It comes from Stephen Covey, the same Stephen Covey of the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He said this, treat a man as he is, and he will remain as he is. Treat a man as he can and should be, and he will become as he can and should be. That's a great quote. What do you expect of people? 
If you expect more, people generally rise to meet those expectations. I hope that helps you, gives you some food for thought today, and I hope that helps you become the kind of leader that you would want to follow. Thank you.